is how we ride. This is how we do. Car racing is, is getting more into the mainstream, I think. Well, let's. Look, I guess we can talk about the craziness. Um, you you haven't really. I, I don't. I don't think you want to talk about when all this came about. But can you? When, when was there some timelines like before the season was over? Did you know that you could be doing what you're assigned to do now? When did this shift in your life? kind of start when did you know that you were or thought about not doing the pit reporting for dirt vision and being an announcer at high limit because the announcer for high limit deal was like a wide open game uh uh, you know everybody was discussing wondering comment sections were full about it when did you kind of know that this is what you were going to end up doing yeah i mean i'll talk about it a little bit here i mean um it was i mean i'm still shocked right now that it's even me to be completely honest with you, you know, I, uh, I can't remember how long ago it was, uh, world of outlaws at, at Port Royal this year. Uh, let me see. I'm on my computer so I can look this up right quick, but, um, it was funny. around that. That's not happening again, but funny. Go ahead. How did... <laughs> that... So it looks like it was on October 6th was the Port Royal show. Right. So a few days before that I had, you know, this was when I think I can't remember because I think I was hearing some rumors or whatever about High Limit doing a national tour or whatever. Um, And I kind of knew that, you know, you know, Dylan Welch, he does a lot of NASCAR stuff. He's probably not going to be able to do a full High Limit schedule. Tony Bachhoven, he's running for mayor of Knoxville. He's probably not going to be able to do a full thing, right? So I just kind of sent a a little text to to Larson, and I just said, hey, you know, all I said, that uh, actually, that's funny, the the text read, it said – we got them racked and stacked next year, question mark. And that was it. And I don't know if you know my old saying that I used back when I announced a lot was, we got them racked, we got them stacked. And, we got and he knew that because stacked. he paid attention to that racing scene. So it was like a, yeah, it was an he, inside joke, technically. Exactly, inside joke. So it was like, a, you know, just a text, and I, you know, wasn't expecting anything about it, right? He responded, said a little something, whatever, you know, and then that was it. So then Kyle had ran Port Royal on October 6th or whatever, and I, you know, he was standing next to the track entrance and I was standing there and, you know, I was just like, Hey, you know, uh, so what's going on with, uh, with that deal next year? And he's like, Oh, I sent your text to Brad. And, you know, he said he'd keep in mind or something. Right. And mind you, that's October 6th. So okay. then I don't hear anything for forever. Right. For a long time. So then world finals comes around and as, and I am fully prepared to go back on the outlaw tour the next year and be the pair of horror. You're thinking it's over. You're thinking you, you, you try, you shot your shot and you didn't get nothing back. And, and sometimes silence is the best answer type thing. Yeah. And I mean, at least put it out there, put a feeler out there. Right. But, and I wasn't mad that they didn't respond. Right. Cause like I technically, man, like I'm not, I would say I am not a, proven announcer on the national scene right? right i think you would agree with that right I've yeah i feel the same way stars. right yeah a lot of west coast stuff blah 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 um but you know and i was like okay you know they've probably got 50 people messaging about this job that are highly qualified they are way you know they they've heard them before they're, they're you know they're the best right so world finals comes around i'm talking to my bosses there i'm like yeah i'm ready to you know come back and do it again so that was my plan so then the day after thanksgiving you know, I got a call from, from Mike Hess and, you know, he kind of said something about it. And I was like, well, you know, I mean, I, I mean, that's the next progression in my professional career, right. Is to go from pair horror and, and, and try to get an announcer, right. Cause that's what I want to be as an announcer. And he put the feeler out there, you know, that was, like I said, that was the day after Thanksgiving. Um, and the day after my birthday, I think or two days after my birthday or something like that. But um, a few days later, you know, here's some more talk, here's some more calls, some more emails and whatnot. And, I want to say it was the Saturday before, or, or sorry, the Friday before PRI, which would have been December 2nd, I think. That was when I officially had signed the paperwork and, and had done it. So, um, yeah, that was kind of how it all went, right? And you know, So and within I a week's think- time from it being announced, basically, week-ish, you didn't even know. You were going, you were Dirt Vision next year. You were pit reporting. Correct. Correct. Yeah, and I was totally fine with that, man. I, I, like I said, that didn't I make you myself. feel like the last option, did it? No. So you know, that was the funny thing, right? I mean, I know that they had some other guys 
that were in front of me to get the position, right? But they couldn't get them, you know, they had other commitments or they, you know, they couldn't do it or they had a family so they couldn't leave all the time or, or whatever it was, right? I was like the fourth or fifth guy in line that they thought about, which, hey, that's fine with me, man. Look, I'm here now and I – I am fully aware that I was not the number one draft pick and I'm fine with that, you know, but um, they, it's, and it was so crazy when I got the phone call and everything worked out, you know, and, and, and you sound like Joe Flacco. I mean, seriously. I honestly, I think I know who that is. Is that Baltimore Ravens? I I don't know. Yeah, kind of, but so that, that's crazy. (laughs) That's a hell of a turn of events. So that it's, it happened that fast. Yeah, no, it really did, man. Um, it was like, well, they need, like, you know, they were like, okay, well, we need an answer by this date because we're announcing it, you know, during PRI week. And I was like, well, geez, man, I got to make some phone calls. Like, I called, dude, my phone log, man, for about five days. I was making like 15 phone calls a day to my family, my friends, my girlfriend, my freaking cat, my dog, my fish. Dude, I was calling everybody for advice and what they thought and this and that. And, um, luckily I have a lot of people that I can call for, for things like that, you know? So, um, I got a lot of great advice from a lot of really good people and, and made the decision, you know, and I see a lot of people commenting on stuff saying that I left for the money, man. And that, that's just not the case. I could have, I could have stayed there and made more money for at Dervision and done that. And I, it's not about the money sometimes, Chaz, you got to think about the time. About opportunity. You know, you think about, it's about playing you the game. The you got to think about the opportunity, man. Like, I know, in in my opinion, a lot of people don't know. You know, a lot of people will disagree. I think Johnny Gibson is the best yeah. announcer in sprint car, bar none, all together. The music, his style, his his uh, you know, his delivery. You know, he's you know, he's got the same thing that he does it's every a single race. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think Brian Holbert is right there as well. I think Brian Holbert is very very good at what he does. Um, and uh, I, but I know Johnny ain't going anywhere, man. He's got right. 15 more years, you know, and I, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be a pillow reporter for 15 years. I saw this chance to be an announcer and I jumped on it, you know, and that's a huge opportunity. That's the next stepping stone in my career. You know, that's where I want to go. And, um, I, I well, feel you, like if I didn't take a chance, then who knows when it would have been available ever again, you know, if ever. Well, you said you called families and friends. How was the tough call to somebody with the World Racing Group about this? I'm, I'm assuming did that call happen, or did they find out like everyone else? No, absolutely. I called them, and and you know a lot of calls right along the way to to make that decision right, and and it was super hard, man, because every job I've ever worked in my entire life, and I'm not talking about you know broadcast work. I'm talking, you know, like I said, I worked at the Walmart distribution center. I worked at uh, Roundtable Pizza, the delivery driver. I worked at Factory no relationships. Park. Yeah, well, and and all of these places that I worked at, I worked there for three years or more, every single place. Like, I was very loyal to the places I worked at, right? And um, I was very loyal to Dervision, right? I was there for three and a half years, you know, for and so to leave and, and break that, you know, break out of that relationship was, was super tough. You know, I met a lot of really good people, people that I will be, will be friends with for the rest of my life. You know, I had some great bosses there and, uh, that was the tough part was knowing that, you know, I'm, I'm leaving that portion of, of my life behind, you know, and, and going to pursue something else. And I made that very clear in those phone calls to those guys. I said, look, I would not be in, even in this position if it wasn't for you guys. You guys took the chance on me in the very first place and, you know, got me out there to the, to the public. Right. And without Dervision, I, I know I would not be sitting here talking to you about, you know, being the, the high limit racing announcer, you know? So I told them that and I was grateful for every opportunity they ever gave me. Now, as much as the chat sections want me to come in there and be color commentator with you, that is off the table. Let's make that official for everyone to know. <laughs> yeah, I don't make those decisions, Chaz. I, I, I don't. That know would be need, hilarious, though. Pre race, we need pre race. We need Pat McAfee and, and me out there yelling and, and cussing the Larson fans. This is how we ride. This is how we do. Ride must, ride